Hello and welcome back to Deck Doctor. This week has been pretty tough for me. I've been trying to find a deck to show you guys, uh, but the meta game hasn't really stabilized yet. Uh, players are still testing a lot of decks, and we only have a vague idea on some of the decks that are really good right now. Uh, on my stream on Friday, uh, I played against viewers, and a, and a player named Little Newbie uh, challenged me and used this deck against me and free zeroed me with this list. And I asked him, could I feature this deck on Deck Doctor? It looks really cool. And he was kind enough to give me this deck. But he also told me that this deck was inspired by Imperia. So both Imperia and Little Newbie are responsible for the creation of this deck. Now this deck has a lot of mobility. It's a lot of damage output. And it has a lot of durability, thanks to Gift of Steel. And I was very impressed with Little Newbie's, not only his performance, but with how this deck played out. So let's get right into it, guys, and talk about the cards that you'll be using within this deck. So to start things off, we're going to have your standard creatures. So these creatures are not affected by Gift of Steel. We'll be talking about that card a little bit later if you don't know much about it. So we got some pretty standard red creatures in this deck already. We have Axe Grinder. Axe Grinder is very good in the metagame right now. Not only is it a stable, solid body at 4-3 for free theory, which also gets its buff uh, from the aggressive mountain spots, but it also directly challenges June Drakes. And June Drakes being uh, the perfect opener for a yellow rush player. So if you can get this guy down in front of your orb to block a June Drake, it's really going to help you out. Cheap Gavra, June Drake Killer, can't go wrong with a good old Axe Grinder. Next up we have the Grand Shaker. 5-6 for 6 Faria, great stat line, 1 damage, of a uh, gift effect uh, to all creatures and your opponent's orb. A great way to deal with gatherers, a, a great way to help your other creatures take care of um, creatures they can't uh, answer straight away without that extra 1 damage. Uh, so a great utility creature, but also a very sturdy creature at that with its stat line. Next up we have Cypher. Now, Cypher got buffed. Uh, with the 10 new cards, he got the slam mechanic. Now, one of the great things about Cypher in this deck is it has a lot of mobility. So you're going to be able to utilize Cypher, Cypher Slam a lot easier than you would in any standard red deck. So this deck packs Triton's Banquet, uh, giving Cypher Jump, but also Silent Horsemaster as well, allowing it to dash up uh, the field and uh, take care of some creatures. So I believe Cypher has tremendous potential in this deck. So let's talk about the events next. So these event cards are your primary removal cards. We have Cypher's Wrath, deal two damage to a creature and your opponent takes two damage. So an extra bit of burn for your opponent to help you finish them off. And Flame Burst as well, which can target anything. Uh, that's one of the great things about Flame Burst. Uh, not only can it help you take care of creatures, uh, take care of structures as well, for the library very, being very popular in blue decks but also can help you finish your opponent off so pretty standard stuff as far as the red removal events go so let's talk about the utility cards so like i said earlier this deck has quite a lot of mobility and it's thanks to the silent horse master and the triton's banquet that the deck is able to get a lot of uh, reach on the board you know able to jump able to, to rush down and get charge free and move across the board and, and this is what makes this deck quite powerful in combination with the Gift of Steel. So Silent Horse Master not only acts as a form of mobility, but also acts as a creature you can fight on board with and collect Feria with. So that, he's got a lot of utility in himself alone. Triton Banquet is the only one lake you need for this card. So you're not going to be playing any blue creatures or aren't in a deck. So you can slap your blue lake somewhere where it's going to be out of the way. Pro probably somewhere where you're not going to want to summon anything. So next to wells, potentially. Uh, and then you're going to be able to give your creatures jump plus, plus one, plus one. And that's going to allow cards like Cypher, which I talked about early, to do devastating damage. And then if you combine it with this card, which is kind of what brings all this deck together, uh, Triton's Banquet and Gift of Steel, plus free attack to a creature. And that creature also gains plus three life it has, if it has a combat ability. So the next three creatures we're going to talk about have all combat abilities and they can get buffed up quite a lot. Like little underground brigands can be devastating five sixes. So this is a key card you're going to want to be using uh, to keep 
your creatures alive, you know, giving that extra health, but also being able to put pressure on your opponent. So let's talk about these combat creatures. That Gift of Steel is going to be buffing up. So to start things off, we have Underground Brigand, a free Feria 2 free combat gain 2 Feria. Has an excellent ability with Gift of Steel because he's going to turn into a 5 6, which is going to be a, a bit tough to deal with sometimes. So you may be able to get his combat ability off multiple times, giving you additional Feria to work with. Uh, keep in mind, guys, as well, uh, one of the recent patches allow combat abilities to trigger on orbs. So you're going to be able to get these abilities off as well as you're being aggressive. Uh, Underground Brigand is going to be one of your main Feria gatherers until you get a Gift of Steel on him. Maybe a Triton's Banquet as well uh, to help him mop up some of the board or be aggressive. Uh, Grimguard is another... Uh, combat ability creature which deals two damage much like shemmed and brute they both have the same combat ability uh the only difference with this one is is he has taunt uh which is going to be really good at defending against rush decks and of course with that gift of steel as well he gets even more stats he's going to be an even more durable creature that's going to help protect your orb finally shemmed and brute there's only two of these in the deck uh but these have great stat lines with gift of steel a six nine to tremendous amounts of health going to be able to stick to the board for quite some time and the more uh, you get to hit with him the more damage you're going to do your opponent in the long run and things like flame bursts and cyphers wrath are going to start adding up and when these guys do have gift of steel especially the grim guard and the shemmed in brute and you hit your opponent in the face that's a lot of damage like this combat ability does start to add up like i said so it's some great synergies in this deck uh, so let's talk about the mulligans. So I'm approaching the mulligans a bit differently from now on. So my first mulligan section are going to be cards that you definitely want in your opening hand. And if you don't have any of these cards in your opening hand, you're probably going to want to throw them all away to try and find one of these. Uh, there are certain situations when you understand what deck your opponent's playing. Uh, where you could possibly keep something, but that comes with knowledge after you've played this deck for a little while. Uh, Axe Grinder, which I just talked about earlier, is great at stopping Dune Drakes, a great collector. Uh, one of the best cards you can get in your opener, especially against aggressive decks. Uh, Underground Brigand is a great Faria Gatherer. He's cheap as well, and of course his combat ability is going to give you some economy. Uh, Grimguard is a good defensive creature as well. It's quite cheap as well, only at four Feria. Uh, both Grimguard and Underground Brigand cost two mountains, so you're not going to be able to get them down until turn two anyway. Uh, but yeah, these two guys are going to be able to collect for you on turn two, whereas Axe Grinder is going to start being able to collect for you on turn one after you play him. So if you get one of these cards in your hand, maybe even two of them, then you can consider some of the luxury mulligan cards to go along with them. So you've got your Axe Grinder, or you've got your Underground Brigand, and now some of these cards show up in your hand. Ground Shake is a great keep if you know your opponents have like one health Faria Gatherers, uh, but also it's great for chipping away at opponents' creatures so you can line up Cyphers, Wraths, and Flame Bursts you pick up along the way to stop them their Faria Gatherers. So Ground Shake is a great keep. Cypher could also be a great keep, uh, depending on certain matchups uh he is a six fairy of five six he is very scary as well a lot of a lot of creatures are not going to want to contest this unless they know for certain they can kill it so he could be worth keeping as well and cypher's wrath is generally a good keep against decks you know that have cheap fairy gatherers with low health like spring mochis farm boys stuff like that you can just cypher's wrath them off the board straight away and then they can't get any value from them when they collect some fairy so these are luxury keeps. You want to get your Feria Gatherers first, and then you can consider keeping one of these. So next up, we're going to talk about land placement. So with land in this deck, you kind of want to build like mid-range red. It's very similar in the fundamentals of how you play this deck. Uh, you want to build a cross uh, on the mid-range tier of land placement. And then you want to build straight up. Now you can get some uh, lands in between the wells to start collecting. Uh, but one of the good way reasons to build straight up like that is because of your Silent Horsemaster. You want to have as much land available to utilize that charge free buff on some of your creatures. Um, eventually you're going to want to be getting a mountain down. 
uh, on your opponent's well so your axe grinders can get buffed up. Now you don't necessarily need all of these mountains but you ideally want a more aggressive mountain so your axe grinders can put on more pressure uh, but you shouldn't be too upset if you get one on the interior well because then your axe grinders can collect as well. As for the lake, you're going to need to place one lake at some point if you get a banquet. Uh, just put it out of the way. You don't want to put in a like an axe grinder spot, for example, because the only thing that you can summon on that lake is a silent horse master. So you could play it next to your orb if you want to, if you feel like you've got enough land already spread out, spread out across the wells. And yeah, so just if you've watched my mid-red guide, it very, plays very similar to that. Uh, but you have a lot more mobility uh, with that Triton's Banquet and that Silent Horsemaster. And we'll be covering how this deck's going to be played in the next episode of Deck Pilot. So that wraps things up for this episode of Deck Doctor. Like I said, the metagame is still in development, so there isn't a tier list available yet. There's no fixed meta. And I feel this deck can be pretty strong. Uh, and it looks quite fun as well, having all that mobility with your red creatures, but also getting to use the Gift of Steel card as well. So be sure to give this deck a shot. Uh, I think you guys would really enjoy it. I hope you like the new overlays I've designed. If you do like them, let me know in the comments. I always love to hear you guys' feedback. And I think it looks a lot cleaner, and it's nice to get kind of the bigger cards on the screen as well. Uh, if you do enjoy these videos, please support us at playfairy.com. Uh, you can check out our articles and news there as well as my videos. We also have our social medias on the side as well and you can follow them as well. Um, also, go to TV underscore fairy. I stream from Tuesday to Friday from 4 p.m. CET and I play various decks. I climb to God rank. I play Pandora. I test my own decks. I do all sorts of stuff on there. So if you'd like to get involved, uh, be sure to uh, tune in. Uh, recently on Friday, I did a viewers challenge uh, where viewers could challenge me directly. And we played a best of five Pantheon format. This might be something I want to consider doing every Friday from now on. And unfortunately, the viewers ended up beating me 3-2. Uh, I played five viewers uh, on stream. And three viewers beat me, and I beat two other viewers. So they were the ultimate victors of that stream. Thank you very much again, guys, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this deck. Take care. Have a great day.